Okay, so continuing on, we're going to add the FK controls to this rig. And one thing about FK controls is we'd probably like them to be in line with the actual joints themselves. And in this case, it might not matter too much because the arm doesn't bend that much at this point. But in some characters, you might have these arms bending quite a bit, or the legs, or any other systems that might use an IK or you want to add FK to and it usually looks a bit better if we have the controls in line so the control will be aiming down this bone and this also becomes invaluable because later on if we start to rotate this bone you can see so for example this wrist here we will be rotating along the x-axis so we get that nice twist but if the control above the wrist is not in line with that joint then we're not going to get the same twist so we can see here with the wrist control we didn't need to tackle this earlier on because with the rotate tool in gimbal or local we can see that it's using the world's origin the, so the rotation is the same as the world so same as the grid so X is straight down and the same is for the control, so they're both in line, so we don't need to we need to apply it to the wrist control earlier on. But you can see that this arm bone here yeah, is actually off the grid a bit. It's actually bending towards this elbow. So if we had a control that was in line with the grid, if we went to twist along the X, so this X axis here, if it's aligned with the grid, it's not truly uh, rotating down the bone. So it's not going to rotate parallel to the bone. So we'll get some sort of an offset. So a quick demonstration down here. So if we just create um, a simple joint chain again. So this could be an example of someone's arm just to exaggerate a bit more you can see that if we rota rotate down X we get the rotation we expect we would want to twist down that joint just so we can keep that bone parallel keep it straight but just rotate down that bone now if I create a curve so later on as we've been doing with the arm we'll create another control curve for the FKs so just for a quick example if this control isn't aiming down the bone you can see now by rotating X this bone isn't staying straight all of a sudden we're getting that offset it's not rotating down the bone and the same with what we were on about with the fingers earlier the rotate order's not matching up so in order to get that rotation down the bone to keep that bone straight but just twisting we'd have to rotate all three of these axes and that's just not going to be possible you see it's nearly impossible to try and get that bone to stay straight fiddling about with all three axes so it's important that we align the FK controls with the bones to get them to match up and the way we can do this, so I'll just reset this back to the origin so one way we can do this is we get the control and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees to aim down the X axis because we've got the bone is aiming down the x-axis and what I'll do now is I'll scale it up a bit and I'll just delete the history and freeze transformations on this and again all these freeze transformations is really important and all I'm going to do is hit control G to group that or you can with the control curve such you can go to edit and group so now we've grouped this object and we've got the group selected we want to hold down V and vert snap to the joint and all I'm going to do is with the group selected select the bone and hit P for parent so we're selecting the child which is a group selecting the parent which is the bone and just hitting P or you can go to edit parent and then if you want to unparent it's shift P or edit unparent so what we're doing here is we've basically taken this group and we have put it inside this bone so it's now the child of that bone and what that actually does is to keep this group 
group's orientation how it was, we didn't want that to change, what it's actually going to do is counteract the angle of this bone. So we can see here that if we select the group, it's actually put a rotation in there to cancel out because we've taken it and put it inside the bone's sort of origin. So it's its sort of grid is taken from this bone. So now what we can do is if we just reset this to zero, we can see now it's perfectly aligned with that bone. So if I go select the curve and go to the rotate tool and again hold in E, left click to make sure it's in gimbal or local so we can see its actual rotation we can see that that control actually perfectly aligns with this bone now you see but switching between these two you can hardly see the difference so we don't really want the control still parent to this joint because that's going to cause problems we, we can't have the control we can't have the joint controlling the control so what we need to do now is select the group and hit shift P which is unparent and all that's done is we've taken the group parented it to the joint reset its rotations to align with the joint and then unparented and the same as it did before when we parented it because we unparented it now it's in world space it's had to put some rotation values in here but the advantage of this is this is on the group not the control so if we expand the group you can see in here the control the nerve circle has zero translates and rotates so it's animator friendly but the group above it has values in it but all we need to do is just ignore this group now we can actually lock all these values so if we select the group another way to select a group is if we select the curve if you press up it's called cherry picking which is you're going up in hierarchy so you're going to the next parent above this so I'll select the child if we just hit up it'll go straight to the group so what we can actually do is just select these and we could just like um, lock and hide everything and as we're animating and rigging later on all we need to do is keep this curve inside that group so we'll rename this group later on as a rotate offset but we can just ignore that group all it's there for is to make sure that this curve is orientated correctly and now if we actually so I'll just quickly parent the joint to the curve and now what will happen is because that curve is aligned you can see rotating the curve is getting that nice rotation again that bone is staying straight and we're rotating down the same axes so keeping this consistent means the animator is going to have a much easier time rotating these joints whereas before working with three axes it's going to be nearly impossible so I'll just delete them and we'll come back to our arm controls. So we're going to do the same up here basically for these bones. So what I'm actually going to do is, and again you can use any type of controls you want. I've used this wrist control because it looks the shape of the wrist. It represents that volume. So for FK controls I usually like to use a cylinder. So I'm going to do the same as we did before. I'm going to create a polygon object I'm going to set the subdivisions to 8 and now what I'm going to do like we did before is get the curve tool just make sure it's on linear um, again I recommend opening the script editor and clear the top and I'll just move that to the side just so it's recording what points I'll be clicking and clicking on vert snap while holding down V, I'm just going to snap to every single edge. And the idea of a, a animation control or control curve is basically just to give the animator, just to show the animator what it actually does. So instead of just having a nerve circle for the FK controls, what we can actually do is have a whole cylinder that represents that whole arm's volume that way the animator knows that that FK control represents that whole volume, that whole bone and also it's a lot easier to select so just checking we've got every single corner of this cylinder made and just hit enter to end the tool and we can see here, see here in the script editor it's created that curve so we can just copy the code and paste it below and 
and it's a good idea that you can add these to your shelf by selecting the code middle mouse click and drag onto your shelf and it's a good idea just, just to keep these at the side or keep them on the shelf so you can keep reusing these so every time we want to make another cylinder I don't have to redo it and I'm just going to tap double slash which is commenting out so anything in after the double slash it turns red it means it's basically a comment Maya's not going to execute that, it's not going to see its code so I'm just going to add a comment, it's box curve because that's the box we did earlier and tube curve just so I've got them at the side if I want to use them later so with that created we can delete the polygon cylinder I'll switch off vert snap and I can s scale this and I'm going to rotate this again so it's aiming down the x-axis so rotate 90 degrees and delete history freeze transformations so it's nice and clean what we could actually do is I'm just going to duplicate that again and add it to the temp group so just so Another way that if you don't want to keep the mel code, if you don't want to add it shelf, any objects that you make that you can re you can reuse later on, you can always just add to your little temp group. So you can always just re reshow that group and copy or duplicate across again. So with this selected, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Control D again, move that side. So I'll use this for the second part of the arm. So with the first one, hit Control G to group. Holding down V, I'm going to snap to the joint. I'll do the same with this first control. I'll set it back to the middle, hit Control G to group, Control V, well, holding down V, sorry. I'm going to vert snap to this jo second joint up here. And actually, what I'm going to do here is uh, vert snap it to the first joint. So we've got this double elbow joint going on. And with FK controls, usually what you do is you rotate the control, so rotating this upper arm control is going to rotate this bone. So rotating this 90 degrees rotates the bone 90 degrees. But what we're going to do here with the double elbow is it's going to be a bit of a pain having two FK controls in there because really you don't want to rotate these joints separately. So what we're actually going to do is set it up in a way that if we rotate this control 90 degrees, it's going to rotate the first joint 45 and the second joint 45. So that way in a total it rotates 90 degrees but it's, it spreads it out evenly between those two joints so with the first group selected select the joint hit P for parent so selecting the child then the parent uh, we can select this control hit the up arrow to go to its parent which is the group just reset the rotation to zero and then we're going to hit shift P to unparent. So now we've rotated that group back, resets transforms, unparented, and it's got all the transforms on there off the bone, but now the control underneath it's aligned with that bone but again it doesn't have any transforms on it. So we'll do the same with the second group. Press up to select its group, select the bone to hit P to parent. I'm going to reset there and press up again to select its group and hit shift P to unparent. So you can see now if we scale these up means bones are aligned with the joints. So what we can do here now is basically and also if we press W left click and go to object mode for the move tool I can bring, double click to bring up the options this means that we're moving along the object so it's going to move in a straight line whereas if we moved it in world we're going to take it off that axis so all the work we did to group in it and parent it is going to be irrelevant so just make sure if you move this curve make sure it's in object mode and I'm just going to move this into place and actually a good point here is to bring up the mesh so we can actually see, and I'm just going to deselect joints in the selection mask I'll deselect everything else, just so we can work on these curves so bringing up the mesh so we can just see 
where the mesh is we can start to align these curves so I'm just going to component mode moving the CVs about just to represent the bulk of this character and moving the CVs isn't going to have any effect on the rotation of this this whole curve object so you don't have to worry about if it's out of line we just want to move it back into place so it represents this but the rotation is still aligned with that bone so here I'm just scaling it I'm just going to rotate it a bit just so we can visually represent that whole bone so the animator can look at this control and go straight away right that, that's controlling that arm so they don't, they don't have to think about it, they can just look at it straight away and know what that control does and again with the second bone move this down and just rotate it into place just again just making it look nice it's not just aesthetically pleasing but it just makes it obvious what these controls are used for so there we can see how easy it will to be identified that this will control this bone this will control this bone this section of the arm